what is next on that landscaping to-do list of yours? Maybe wow. some shrubs, a couple of flower beds mm -hmm. here and there, or maybe some trees? Well, if it's the latter of the three, the monitor's Paul Baglese has some information on one tree you may want to scratch off your list permanently. Hi, I'm Paul Puglese with the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension. Today I want to talk to you about a very popular landscape tree known as the Bradford Pear. This is a particular tree that we see planted all over the state uh, for the flowers. It's actually a very popular landscape tree and produces beautiful white flowers in March and early spring every year. Uh, so this is one that uh, has become very popular over the last 50, 60 years. The Bradford Pear was actually introduced by USDA in the 1960s as a, uh, a variety from China and Korea to actually try to breed in disease resistance into some of our cultivated or edible pear varieties. Uh, unfortunately, that never really produced a whole lot, uh, but they did find some really interesting uh, flowering types of Bradford pears uh, to make into an ornamental for landscape uses. Uh, so this is one that is very, very popular and uh, one that we see planted all over the state of Georgia. Interestingly enough, I'm not a, actually a very big fan of Bradford pears. Uh, for one thing, the flowers actually kind of smell bad. If you've ever smelled the flowers, they almost smell like dead fish in the springtime. Another reason they're not uh, a very popular plant as far as I'm concerned is that they tend to be very short-lived. Uh, they have very weak branch structures. If you notice, the branches on, on Bradford pears kind of go up vertically. They're very, very um, tall and, and gangly, and they tend to split out and break when they get older. So around 15, 20 years old tends to be the limit as far as the age of these trees. Whenever a storm blows through town, you'll see these start to self-destruct and drop branches and become a problem in the landscape. So again, this tends to be a short-lived tree, not a big fan. The third reason that I'm not a big fan of Bradford pears is they actually have a, um, a tendency to revert back to a wild type that's invasive. Um, so just like other invasive species like kudzu and Chinese privet and wisteria, this actually has an invasive cousin called wild calorie pear. The wild calorie pears actually produce these types of branches that look very similar, smaller leaves, but if you pull back the, the leaves, you'll notice that they actually have thorns that start to produce out, and these thorns can get two or three inches long. These thorns are actually sharp enough that they could actually pack, puncture the tire of a tractor or a car if you're not careful. So as you can imagine, these are not very pa popular trees when they start growing wild in people's yards and over farms and fence rows and along roadsides. Um, so how do they become invasive? Well, the Bradford pear, as you can see, does not have those thorns, but it actually does produce some fruit, and these particular fruit are very, very tiny. Uh, the fruit on this tree actually can hybridize with other wild pears, and so sometimes it'll produce viable seeds, and the fruit are actually eaten by birds and carried and planted everywhere that those seeds drop. And so that's how these wild calorie types begin to start. So we're going to talk a few minutes about how to control these. One of the other ways that Bradford pears can go wild is through stump sprouts. If you take a look at this tree, it's actually a type that's grafted. Some of the old Bradford pear varieties were grafted onto a wild type of rootstock uh, with the calorie pear species. So whenever they produce uh, root suckers, whenever the tree falls over, dies, or if it gets hit with a weed eater one too many times, it'll produce these sucker sprouts. And these suckers will also produce thorns and sometimes they'll bear fruit that'll spread. And so one of the things you want to do is avoid hitting that tree or wounding that tree uh, to create these types of suckers and be a problem. One of the ways to get rid of Bradford pears that become invasive is make sure you treat the stumps. Anytime a tree dies or you have to cut it down for some reason, you want to make sure you treat those stumps so that they don't come back from the root sprouts. This can also be used for any of the wild types of calorie pears that tend to regrow from those stumps when you cut them down. So the way to do that is to treat it with a stump treatment of herbicide. Uh, and there are actually a couple of different herbicides you can use. Uh, the two most popular ones are glyphosate and triclopyr. And make sure you pick up a highly concentrated type that has maybe a 40% concentrate of glyphosate uh, to use this type of a stump treatment. Whenever you're doing a stump treatment, it's really important to note that you don't actually dilute this out. This is one of the few exceptions that you use at full strength. And so when you measure this out, you actually want to use a disposable paintbrush. Make sure you wear gloves to protect your hands from any chemicals that you might be exposed to. I prefer a disposable brush so that when I'm done with it, I throw it away and it doesn't get used for anything else. When you're doing a stump treatment, you can dip your, your brush into that uh, herbicide and you paint it right onto the stump, full strength, and you want to go all the way around the edges. What's interesting is you don't have to treat the whole stump. You only have to treat the outer inch or two around the perimeter of the stump, and that'll actually do very well as far as controlling the tree. So you can save a little bit of herbicide by not treating the entire stump. And if you do this properly, this will prevent those root sprouts from coming back. 
If you do have a very aggressive root system, sometimes you need to come back and spot spray those sprouts that come up later. One very important thing to remember is to treat the stump while it's still green. As soon as you cut it down, the quicker you can treat that stump, the better. For more information, contact your local county extension office or go to our website at ugaextension.org. And be sure to follow us for more gardening tips on the Georgia Farm Monitor.